<clears throat> by applying the law of sines, um, when I look at this triangle, what I notice is here's 72, uh, not 72 degrees, B is 25, and A is 55. OK, now we obviously notice that Kyle, we cannot apply the law of sines, right? Because we need one of those angles. If we have an angle, we would much rather use the law of sines. However, there are going to be triangles where we cannot apply the law of sines, at least initially. All right? Now, remember, when we're dealing with the law of sines, uh, when we have one acute angle, it's possible when we find that other angle, like the last, remember the homework problem that we did today, the homework quiz problem? When you have an acute angle, right, that was 76 degrees, which was acute. And when I went to go and find the other angles using the law of sines, I had to be careful because I had to include the, the acute and the obtuse of the inverse of that angle. Do you guys, right? Remember what I was talking about? Right? You have to include, you have to look for at both options. However, Samantha, if I am given an obtuse angle, is it possible for me to have another obtuse angle? Is it possible for me to have two obtuse angles? Well, how many, ang how many degrees are there in a triangle? 180, right? So if one is already larger than 180 or 190, it's impossible if you have another one that's going to be larger than 90, all right? So what I'm going to want to do when I'm doing the law of sines is I want to see, can I find the obtuse angle? So Kyle, when you're looking at this triangle, all right, looking at the side lengths, which, ang which side length do you think is going to produce the <coughs> obtuse angle? Because this triangle is not, probably not correct. C. C. So when you're doing the law of cosines and you do not have an angle to choose from, what I would recommend you do is try to find the obtuse angle. Because if you can find the obtuse angle, then you know there's not a two case solutions. But if you choose an acute angle, then you have to be careful because the other angle that you find could be acute or it could be obtuse. And you don't want to go through the two case solutions. So what we're going to do is let's do law of cosines for C. All right. Now we notice we already have the side, and you guys can see your law of cosines. Um, your law of cosines is solved for for the angle and for the side. But I'm just going to use this general formula and then solve for my uh, solve for my cosine of c because it's not really that bad. So I have c, which is 72 squared, equals a squared. So again, I'm going to apply this formula. Actually, I guess I'll write it out. Help you guys out. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of C. Do you guys see how I have to use this law of cosines compared to the other two? Because the only, I'm trying to figure out what, si, what C is, right? So therefore, C is 72 squared equals A squared, which is 55 squared, plus B squared, which is 25 squared minus 2 times uh, 25 or 55 times C or B, which is 25, times the cosine of C, which we're trying to solve. All right? So we'll have to do a little bit of mathematics. OK, so 55 times 55, 3,025, plus 25 times 25, which is 625. Yep. Yeah. So it'd be 3,650 and then I'll just do 2 times 55 times 25 is 2,750 times cosine of C equals 72 uh, squared which is 5,000. Okay, does everybody see what I did so far? I just did the you know, basic operations. Now, I'll go ahead and take that value and subtract it from 36,550. So I'll subtract 33,650 on both sides. And I get 1,534 equals negative 2,750 times the cosine of C. Then I divide by negative 2,750. On both sides. And I'm not going to solve for this. Huh? And now you have to do the inverse cosine. Now, I have a decimal, which is negative 0.557818181818. Yeah. 
Do not, yes, do not round this because this is where you're going to get your, this is where your rounding is going to up. Take this exact answer and use the inverse cosine of second answer, and I get 123.91. Now, that's awesome because now I have an obtuse angle, right? Yes? So do I know? So this C, actually, ladies and gentlemen, is obtuse. This actually looks something like this. Right? No. You end up getting negative 0.557818 equals cosine of C. Then you take the cosine inverse of negative 0.557818 equals C. And therefore, C equals 123.91. OK? Yes? Oh you, got, oh, you got the next one? So now, so now we need to find the other angles, all right? You can go back to the law of cosines if you want to. Since we did it for C, you can now do it for A and B. But to me, even though law of cosines is not bad, I already have a ratio. And I know once I have a ratio, Darian, I just want to use law of, co law of sines, right? It's much simpler. Now that I have a ratio, I can say, all right, um, 72 over the sine of 123.91. Well, that's going to be the same as uh, 25 over the sine of b. So I'll solve for b. You could, you could have done a if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. So now I know that the sine of b equals uh, 25 times the sine of 123.91 divided by 72. So then to find b, all I simply do is take 25 times the sine of 123.91 Divide it by, uh, shoot, I didn't do it, I typed it wrong. 25 times the sine of 123.91, divide that by 72. Take the inverse of that form. So, so therefore, sine of b equals 0 0.28816490054. And then I take the inverse of that to get my angle. So I take the inverse, second answer, and I get b equals 16.75. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have two angles. I can find the third angle by using law of cosines, law of sines, or it would probably just be easiest just to add up all the angles for, or subtract them from 180, right? Yes, Adar. Because it's easier than law of cosines. Remember, once I figured out this side, right? No, 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 no. Listen, at the beginning of the problem, did we have a ratio? All we had was the side lengths, right? Kyle, as I'm going over this, I don't want you to be talking. All we had was the side lengths. That's it. We didn't have a ratio. Once we used the law of cosines to find an angle, we now had a ratio. If you can't, yeah, if you can't use law of sines, you're going to have to use law of cosines. Okay. Now, Adar, you could have, you could use log cosines to find this angle, to find that angle, if you want to. But once you find an angle and you have a ratio, I think law of sines is pretty simple. Um, so now, and then to do the find the third angle, I can just take 180 minus 123.91 minus 16.75. So I can say A equals 180 minus 123.91 minus 16.75. And therefore, A equals 39.34. And there you go. OK?